So now if we look at a little bit more detail at the soil horizons that we have within this pit, uh, recalling that the main ways that we usually distinguish, which, uh, distinguish our soil horizons within the pit is by looking at the color, the structure, the texture. In this particular pit, we're primarily looking at color because the texture and structure are pretty uniform throughout. Uh, we have a fairly sandy texture all the way through the profile, just given the nature of the parent material. And we don't really have much structure because, because we have the sandy material. It doesn't lend itself to the formation of strong structural units like a, a clay, or, clay or clay loam parent material would. So if we look at the horizons that we have here, we do have the LFH layer, so the leaf litter mixed together uh, with the, uh, the folic material and the humic material, so LFH is, represents all of those near the, at the surface here. So from about, say, plus three to zero centimeters, we have an LFH layer. Immediately below that, we have um, basically what we could call an, uh, an AE or an AHE horizon, and so from about zero to three centimeters. So just near the surface here. There's a bit of a thin charcoal layer, so this dark black layer is within the, within the AHE horizon. And it's basically, we can tell that it's an AHE horizon because it's got that slightly grayer color similar to what we've seen in some of the other eluviated or luvic orders that we've, that we've seen already. So we move down from that, so immediately below this AHE horizon, and we get into a little bit more just of a pure AE horizon below that. So at about uh, five or six centimeters here, uh, we're getting into a, our reddish BM horizon. So at, from about six centimeters all the way down to about 40 centimeters, we've got quite a strong uh, reddish BM horizon. So throughout that area, uh, we've got the, uh, the evidence of the accumulation of iron oxides within it, but otherwise no other significant differences in terms of the overall um, uh, horizon characteristics. And then below that, we're into a bit of a transitional horizon, so transitional to the, the, the original parent material, so maybe a, a, the capital B, capital C, so the BC horizon. And even with a bit of, of a faint evidence of mottling within there, so we might call that a BCGJ or some, some such combination to indicate that there is a bit of evidence of glaying within that transitional horizon. So as I've mentioned, the BM horizon is the diagnostic horizon for this particular profile. So that's the reddish horizon that we see right here, the fairly bright red horizon. And when we, if we work through the soil classification keys, uh, part of what we're saying in terms of this being sort of a junior soil or a soil on its way is that the BM horizon is one of the last, one of the last horizons to drop out or the Brunosolic order as a whole is one of the last horizons to drop out because the M, that sort of moderately developed soil, it lacks any of the characteristics of its uh, better developed cousins. It doesn't have the BT horizon or the BF horizon that's characteristic of the Podzolic order. So it is just sort of a moderately developed soil. It has some soil forming processes evident, but uh, not anything uh, significant enough to move it to another order. In terms of the characteristics of the individual horizons then, if we look at these, there's not a whole lot to, to talk about here. We can talk briefly about uh, the color. So looking at our, our surface horizon here, the AHE horizon, We've got a mixture of, uh, with a little bit of charcoal in here, but it's a fairly dark colored horizon. And uh, it would probably end up somewhere in the order of the, within the 10 YR, along the order of uh, say three over two. And uh, there's quite a mixture of colors within this, depending on, uh, the or on which individual grains you focus on, but sort of in the order of three over two or three, uh, three over 2.5. So moving down to the, to the BM horizon, this is that characteristic very, very reddish horizon within the, within the soil profile. If we look at the color of it, so all of a sudden we've moved way over in terms of the chroma, so it's a much, uh, a much brighter chroma. And so we can see that we've moved over here into the, uh, the 6 and 8 range of the, of the possible chromas, probably somewhere in the order of 10 YR, uh, 5 over 8 over here. So quite a bright reddish color in the B horizon.
Then moving below that to that transitional BC horizon, we can see that it gets just a little bit lighter. So where we were at uh, 5 over 8 before, now we're maybe a little bit higher up on this, um, sort of more on the order of uh, 6 over 6 in terms of the overall, uh, the 10YR 6 over 6 for the overall color, maybe even transitional to, uh, to, to 6 over 8 but a little bit lighter in color in terms of the for the for that transitional horizon as we move down to the sea horizon which would probably be a little bit lighter still so moving a little further up in terms of the in terms of its value so i won't go through these ones and do a a a, a detailed description of the the structure basically because there isn't much to say in terms of structure even if we look at the 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 big pile of uh material that we dug out of the hole here. Uh, in the same way that we refer to the parent material in a glacial till landscape as, as being structureless, this would also be referred to as structureless, but instead of describing it as massive, we would probably refer to it more so as single-grained, because this is really just fantastic sandbox sand. As we were digging it out, I was saying, I wish we could bring some home for my son's sandbox. And it just falls apart very, very nicely, and you can easily imagine him wetting it up and building nice sand castles with it, but it doesn't really have any significant structural units on its own. So I can tell you that it's a sandy texture but just for, for demonstration purposes just so you can see what it would look like relative to some of the other soils that you've seen us uh, do the texture on. If I take a little bit of this in my hand and wet it up so you would really, even if you were making your sand castle with this, you would really have to pound it into your bucket to get it to stick together. So unlike the other soils where they, you, it would form a nice strong ball, even when we were just working it together, this still, the, just the ball itself falls apart readily. And we try and, if we try and make a ribbon with this, well, it just, it just doesn't. A little, it just falls apart immediately. And so this is pretty much in terms of it's the, the texture of this, we would just describe this as sand. And it would probably be a fairly coarse sandy material in terms of how it, how it feels, coarse to medium sand in terms of how that feels in tr for its grittiness in the palm of the hand. So given the particular combination of horizons that we have within this soil pit, we have that AHE horizon an AE horizon of under, immediately underneath that of a couple of centimeters and then moving down into the BM horizon. We would classify this particular brunosolic soil as an alluviated eutric brunosol. So what that, what that mouthful says is that the, in, the, in the brunosolic order, the great groups are based primarily on a combination of the characteristics of the A horizon and on the pH of the, of the soil. And so in the case of this particular soil pit, then we can, we're saying it's a eutric brunosol uh, based on the fact that we've, in previous work that's been done in this area, we know that the pH of the B horizon is about 6. So the cutoff is, the, is around 5.5, so in this case our pH is about 6, so we can classify this as a eutric brunosol. Uh, if it were less than 5.5, then we would say it's district and, that, uh, district, and that's what we would find further north of here in the brunosols that have developed directly on the Canadian shield, on the, the, the igneous parent material. The other factor that allows us to state that this is a eutric soil as opposed to a, uh, a melanic soil is the thickness of the A horizon. And so we do have a thin AHE here, but it is less than 10 centimeters. And so in other, uh, in other environments, so soil forming environments, say in, in much of Ontario, under the hardwood forests and whatnot, we would tend to see the same type of a soil profile developing, but a much thicker AH horizon associated with that. So the combination of greater amounts of organic matter input in terms of the leaf litter from the, from the hardwood forests and the mixing of that that organic matter into the, into the A horizon by earthworms gives rise to those much thicker A horizons in the, uh, in the eastern part of Canada. And so that tends towards the melanic brunosol. So this one, we know it's a eutric because of the thin A horizon and the, the pH of around 6. And so the, in terms of the subgroup level then, we're calling it an alluviated, uh, an alluviated eutric brunosol because of that presence of the, the AE horizon in there, the AHE and AE immediately below that. And so that, that, would, that allows us to say that this is an alluviated. If it were an orthic eutric brunosol, we would see a very similar soil profile, but we wouldn't have that evidence of alluviation uh, in, in, in the form of an AE horizon. 
So there we have it. We have an alluviated Utrecht Brunasol on a sandy fluvial lacustrine deposit. And this is one of the dominant, the dominant soil types throughout much of the uh, boreal forest. So this, together with the Luvasolic order, uh, dominates much of the boreal forest region in Saskatchewan.